why I like the Pelicans in this game is both teams are right around 500 coming out of the All-Star break. But the Pelicans are 9-3 and three in their last 12 games. During that stretch, they are far and away leading the league in three-point shooting. They're shooting over 42% from beyond the arc. They're also third in net rating during that stretch. And it's a small-ish sample size. 12 games isn't the biggest, but it's also not like it's just two or three games randomly put together. There's something to be said in any sport for playing well at the end of the season. The Pelicans were the number one seed in the Western Conference a month or so into the season. They completely fell apart when Zion went out. Out. They looked awful going into the all-star break. And in this last month or so, the last three weeks, they've really just figured it out. So they're going to have to take that against a Thunder team that is young and scores a ton of points. The Thunder have the best scorer in this matchup with Shea Gilgis-Alexander. And I like the component parts around him or the supplementary parts, I should say. I think they would have a better chance if Chet Holmgren was back. But I think the Thunder just a hair away probably by way of inexperience. C.J. McCollum, I think his experience shines down the stretch. Pelicans get a narrow victory, and they get to play the Timberwolves for the right to get into the playoff bracket. Grant, do, do you know how big Chet Holgram's ankles are? He's put on some weight. I, I, I'm No, I know. Trust me. I was worried when they drafted him that early, too, but he is putting on weight. He's still not big, but it's good to see because a lot of these players, they, they normally can't. Like Kevin Durant – couldn't bench 185 at his rookie combine, or is it called the whatever whatever the workout for the NBA draft is? And Brandon Ingram, he reportedly they had to force him. His nutritionist was forced him to eat McDonald's because he refused to eat anything else, and that's why he was so skinny. So at least Chet is making the effort, and I, I hope he's able to stay healthy next year. He's just got to eat cereal every night, a box of cereal. They'll put that put the weight on him pretty quickly. Uh, anyways, Oklahoma City versus New Orleans. I don't think the Thunder have played good down the stretch. That's why I'm going to fade them here. So I do agree with you, Grant. Even though it's a big spread, I'm going to ride with New Orleans. Okay, C two and eight against the spread in their ten games to finish the season off. They have been hot against New Orleans, but at the same time, too, I love the way the Pelicans are playing right now. Eight three and one against the spread in their past twelve games, or nine three straight up in their past twelve. I love Brandon Ingram, CJ McCollum. I think they're going to make some big plays down the stretch here they got to neutralize sga that's going to be the big question in this game he can take it over himself uh and that could lead to at least a thunder cover in my opinion but the safe play is going with the pelicans i love that three leg parlay i know a lot of people don't like doing the three teamers but here on ride the line we're riding we'll place a little three teamer we'll get it done you can't play the problem is like these playing games are so hard because you can't play money lines really they're like minus two 200 to minus 250 Five and a half points is a lot in a play-in game, playoff type atmosphere. So I do like the parlay approach. Even doubling up, you know, each day, just going a two-legger each day, trying to pick both your winners, you're going to get good value for that. Yeah, absolutely. These aren't necessarily trap lines in and of themselves, but like you said, in the context, when you look at the value on the money line, minus 200 to minus 250, but then because it's a larger spread between teams that are relatively evenly matched, like you said, in a do or die scenario, it, it becomes a trap scenario. So that's why I'm going with the parlay approach here. Yeah, the home court makes such a difference. Like if I look at, I know a lot of analysts at least are saying that the Hawks have the best chance to pull an upset in the first round, which kind of crazy to me considering they've been so bad against Miami. But at the same time too, if this game's in Atlanta, it's a different story. I might be leaning towards the Hawks. So home court makes such a big difference. People in Miami really don't care about sports until the playoffs. Uh, so we'll see that place rocking tonight. Yep, 100%. And then in the Eastern Conference, we've got the Chicago Bulls, just a half point different in this line between the previous one. Chicago Bulls plus five versus the Toronto Raptors, who are minus five. Now, the Chicago Bulls, I thought Patrick Beverly was maybe the worst player in the NBA when he was with the Los Angeles Lakers. But ever since he's gotten to the Bulls, I don't know if it's his impact. I don't know if Billy Donovan has made the coaching adjustments that were necessary. I don't know if the team spirit has been boosted somehow. But this team has just come together. They're third in the net rating since the All-Star break. They closed their season out on a 14-9 and nine stretch. And that's not dominant by any stretch. But if you look at that win percentage, that would be good to get you somewhere. Maybe to say the fifth or the sixth seed if it applied to the entire season. And they're coming up against a Raptors team that has talent. We've seen it in the postseason. A lot of the players that were there on the championship run are still in place. But Fred Van Vliet, he's your most explosive scorer, and he's shooting a career worst from the field, except for his rookie year, I want to say. Um, they also, the Raptors also aren't the same defensive team as they have been in years past, and that's sort of been their calling card. But they're allowing teams to score quite easily, even though they've got, again, some of those usual defensive stars that they had in place before. 
I'm thinking the Bulls are going to pull the cover at plus five. This is my favorite spread pick of them all. And I also think the Bulls have a really good chance to win this game outright. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I look at the Bulls and I love, absolutely love what they've done with Patrick Beverly. He's my guy. And I hope he gets a chance to knock the Lakers out of the postseason. Whether I, I know it can't happen. It would have, but it would have to be in the NBA I know, finals. And the Celtics are getting there. But I hope, I hope he gets a chance to do it because I, I'm a big Patrick Beverly guy. Uh, you look at the Bulls in their past 10 games against Toronto. They've absolutely owned them. History tends to repeat itself. 7-3 against the spread and 7-3 and three straight up. Toronto just doesn't scare me that much in this spot. I, I like the Bulls with the points here. I might sprinkle the money line as well. They're playing really good basketball to finish the season off, and that's what matters at this time. 4-2 uh, and two against spread in their past six games. Also look for the over there. I could see a lot of points being scored in this one, even though it's a playoff game. The tension might be high early, but at 217 and a half, uh, it opened at, it's now down to 214 and a half. As that line continues to dip, you might want to look towards the over there. Yep, I think that's a pretty sharp play. You always want to look at how the lines are moving, and a lot of the times you want to go against the direction they're moving in. So I think that could be a good play, depending on what it ends up on. Yeah, I mean, if it if it holds at 214 and a half, it might stay away. But if it keeps going down 213 and a half, might want to go the other way. Because that's not a lot of points, especially in a play-in game uh, where the Bulls will be competitive. I think this one's going to be tight down the stretch. Foul shots, we're going to see that. Just could. I mean, you look like UConn in the national championship game. That game got over because of foul shots at the end. Like, teams are willing to do more now than they are in a regular season, which adds on a few extra points at the end of games.